Here we go, everyone. It's time for The Buzz with Plastic EP and Robin B. Buzzing for you. Yeah. <laughs> Right, there's no time for buzzing because we've got a VIP on. Here he is, the one and only Ron Dainty coming in from Los Angeles. I love that guy. How hey, are you, Ron? Hi, everybody. Hi, Ron. Great hi, to Robin. See Looking good, Ron. I love the shirt. Thank you very much. It's a honor of Halloween. We'll be, they'll, be, they'll be trick or treating no matter what. <laughs> what are you going to be? What's on the shirt, Ron? Is it skulls, is it? <laughs> What? Yeah, it's all skulls. See, let's see. Look at that. Ooh, Ooh. scary. <laughs> yeah, Ron, have you got a few shows coming up? What's what's coming up for you? I want to know. I want the world to know what's coming up. Is there any plans now? Yeah, nothing's happening this year so far. I've gotten a couple of offers for New Year's Eve, but I'm still, you know, thinking about it. Uh, a lot of my friends and I we're not flying very much lately, so uh, we want to be careful. Uh, all the dates are set up. I had this big summer tour for, uh, you know, June, July, and August for next year. For this year, it was canceled, but it's all booked for next year. Starting June 3rd, the Happy Together Tour will be out there for 60 or 70 dates all summer. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, people can't wait to see you, Ron. And I've got to tell you, you've got one of the biggest followings here in Australia, and we love you. Now, I want to tell you, everybody, while you're waiting for Ron to go on tour, you go out there and you get the number one double CD that's been released at the moment. It's Ron Dainty's Funhouse. Have a look at the cover. There it is. Ron Dainty's Funhouse. Two CDs. You can't beat it. And look at the back. Look at this. 45 songs, 17 unreleased songs. And if you look carefully at that picture there, look what Plastic EP has that's pride and place in his home. That's right. That's the same picture there. How proud am I to have that in my home? I'll tell you, I am wrong. Thank you, thank you. Tell me, where you got I'm it? Bring Robin back now. Hey, Robin. Tell me about the CD. We're fascinated. Let's talk about that. Well, the CD. Uh, I, I really had a lot of fun putting it together because I got my favorite songs on it. I got a bunch of my animated stuff because I was the voice of like three or four animated groups. Uh, of course, the Archies. We put a lot of the unreleased Archies on it and all the dances that were done in the show, the Betty, the Jughead, the Rocket, all these cute, the Hamburger Hop, all these dances are on it. So I had a lot of fun putting that together. But my animated groups, there's another one on there. I was the voice of Spider-Man on, on an album called From Beyond the Grave. And it's, a, it's kind of a radio show with actors and sound effects and songs. So when Spider-Man, young Spider-Man sings, I sang for him. We called the group the Web Spinners. So the Web Spinners are on there. And my, and, uh, my other group, uh, I did an Asian American uh, cartoon in the 70s called The Amazing Chan and the Chan Clan. It was yeah, based on the one character one Charlie one. Chan, yeah. right? And his, his kids have a band. Yeah, so I, I ended up I put a few of those on there too. That show we got in Australia, Ron, that was big here. No, see, I had a lot of fun writing those songs. A lot of fun. Uh, I did it with my good friend, Howie Greenfield, who uh, wrote Love Will Keep Us Together and all the Neil Sedaka hits for like 20 years. So he wrote all the songs with me. So I put three of those on the CD. Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing it. Looks like you've been working on that for a long time. It's quite a quite a release coming out. It's going to be fantastic. I love the cover. It's, it brings me right into a 1950s diner. Can you show that again? Of course uh, I'm going to show it. We, we can leave it up there. Let me out want. and show it again. Oh, no, we got to keep Pretty Robin in there. <laughs> yeah, that I'm, was done yeah. by uh, the Archie's uh, comic book uh, co guy, uh, Dan Parent, who is very famous, goes to all these signings and gives, you know, signs his work. He's been doing Archie covers for 20 years. And he's a good friend of mine. And he sent. He said, "I said I want you to do me a cover, in a in a in on a soda fountain with Betty and Veronica dancing behind me." And he did it. 
He did it, man. And he did this one too as a personal favor. You know, that one, I, just, I love it. As I said, I can't get I can't get enough of this. Every day I wake up, I'm looking at it. I got sugar sugar playing in the background. It's like my house is a buzz. Because I tell you what, you want to get that happy feeling happening now during this pandemic, and I got it, it's all happening down here. And I suggest turn off the TV there in the United States, play some Archie's music, get up, start dancing, moving around. Because you know, life goes on and we're here and we're moving on. Yeah. yeah. I can see that in my head. I see you in Australia dancing every day to these songs. <laughs> I can see it plastic. It's so I want to see it live. I want to see you live. I want to come to Australia. What city are you in? Melbourne. Melbourne. Okay. A good, good city. A lot of music, right? We're going to catch up. Believe me, we got something that you don't know. We got a guy that's won the world championship pizza. He went to Italy and he's got the world, the world's best pizza and he owns three restaurants. Look at that. The world's best pizzas in Australia. I'm a the, he won the prize. He went to Italy, won the prize. He got three restaurants here. And I'm taking you wrong as my guest. Nice. And we're going to have the best. But you know what? He's got one place. He's got one at the casino and he's got one in the Yarra Valley where the wineries are. Mm-hmm. I'll take yeah. you to the one in the mountains. You'll love it. Okay. So yeah. when this pandemic ends, Ron, I'm going to meet you in Melbourne and we're going to go have him take us for pizza. And then we're going to watch him dance to your songs on your album. How's that sound? It's a date. I'd love to do that. I'd love to visit Australia. I was booked there to do a tour and it got canceled, but I, I was going to do a, you know, travel a lot. I mean, they're, they're far places to go, you know, one side to the other. It's a long flight, but I was ready. You're and coming back, there. Ron. Don't worry. Right. You're going all around the world again. Don't worry. You are, as I said, you, you are the man. As far as I'm concerned, there isn't a day goes past where you're not listening to fantastic music. And I'll tell you what, I told Ron last interview, and I mean this sincerely, the world loves Ron Dainty. You know how much happiness and entertainment he's given everyone in the world? you got no idea. No idea. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate this very much. I wanted to say to Robin, you know, I auditioned for the monkeys. I did. In New York City, Don Kirshner oh. made sure that a lot of us auditioned. I did a pretty good video on it, playing some pop songs. But the guys, you know, Davy Jones really had the edge. You know, there's no doubt about it. And the guys from L.A. had the edge. But I was almost in the monkeys. That's why Don Kirshner cast me in the Archies. He said, this time it'll work, you know. Well, that's I'm glad glad he did. That's great. Yeah, yeah I did not know that. I, I actually have seen the the Davy Jones uh, demo tape for the. Yeah, yeah. For it the was a natural. Tape. I've actually the never seen it. I worked for Peter, but I've never seen his demo tape. Yeah, interesting. Ron, yeah. when you went for the audition, can I ask you? Were you trying out for the four parts, or were you trying for the lead vocal Davy's role? I was trying out for any of the parts. We we just. There were guys in L.A. and New York would, would sell their mothers to get on that show because they knew it was going to be a big hit, you know. So there was a lot of guys auditioning. Friends of mine asked me if I could get them auditions. But I told them, I said, I, you know, Don Kirshner just wants me to audition and a few of the other guys from the publishing company. So that was it. But it was I, I wanted just any spot. I would have taken the comedy spot or the drummer. I would have taken any of those. I wonder who you would have been cast as. That would be interesting. Who do you yeah. think what you would have been cast as? Yeah, I, I, I get a feeling it could have been Mickey or it could have been Davey. I, mm-hmm. I think both were in my genre, you know, experienced professionals uh, who had been, you know, who'd been, already been doing uh, professional work for a while. So but it, it might, might have been them. Yeah, it you never like can tell. Say, it worked out. I, could, I sing I'm a believer yeah. at my show, you know. So. That's great. Hey, and now Mickey Dolenz sings Sugar Sugar. Tell me the story of when he pulled you over and he told you something, come to my car or my truck or whatever. Tell me that yes, story. It was, it was it was at a signing, one of these uh, Hollywood signings. And uh, we were both had tables. And he came over to my table and said, Ronnie, I want you to come out to my car. I have something to play you. I said, great, great. I'm always listening to new songs. I figured it was a new song that he had just written or produced. And he puts the CD in, and sure enough, it's a version of Sugar Sugar, <laughs> which they hated for years. <laughs> they, they never wanted to do. You know, they always said, oh, we turned that song down. But it was a good version. It was like a really uh, different spin. 
Uh, yeah, he's well, Mitch dance. is pretty talented. He's very musical. Very he slows that song down. He what? He slides the song down on his version. And Yours he does lovely. it in this live act. Yeah. Now I've got a he question. Does. I told him, I said, you finally did it. <laughs> After 40 years, you finally got this song. I'm sure Andy Kim and Jeff Barry are, are, are thrilled that he did it. You know, another recording of it. we got a question for you there, Ron, if you want to read it out, Robin. It says, hi, Ron. Dante, love your music. Has the song Love Vibrations ever been released on CD? And he also wants you to know that New Haven Peace is the best, which I happen to agree because I'm from that area. But anyway, that's you know, I don't think it's been. I think it may be on my new CD. I mean, I would check the, the, the lineup on it. I think that's one of the songs that I really wanted on the CD was Love Vibrations. If you wait a minute. I'll look. Oh, oh please, please. please. Excellent. Sugar, sugar, da 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 da. Oh, That's in my head yeah. all night now. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, the real deal. Promo, I promo. Hold seat. on a second. Let me see what I got here. Okay. Hold on. Uh, I need a better light. <laughs> yeah, it's off. <laughs> okay. What do we have here? I love his hard rock hat. No, we left this one off. Is it off? We left this one off. Next, we're going to do a two on this because I have a bunch of unreleased stuff that still has to has to be put out. So uh, Love Vibrations will definitely be on the next one next year. That's I great. That's an exclusive that. there. I bet you no one knows about two, do they? They know about what? I bet you no one knows you're going to come out with volume two. This is an exclusive. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be it'll, we'll definitely, that's right, an exclusive. Nobody knew about this yet. I have two or three more ghost groups to put on there that I right. have discovered I was. I was about 20 ghost groups in the 60s. Every demo I did seemed to come out as a group, you know? So uh, I just found two or three of them. One's called Plant Life, that's the name of my group, and the other's called Renaissance. And uh, the song was Mary Jane. Of course, it was the '60s, so of course it was, it was. It didn't get played that much, but everybody knew what I was singing about. What about the detergents, Ron? Can you tell me a little bit about the detergents and a bit about Tracy? I'm fascinated by that. Mm. Uh, well, the detergents. What was the second part of the question? I want to know more about the Tracy song that was a big hit in Australia. Here, Tracy was a big hit for the Cufflinks. Tracy, yeah. Well, the first one, the detergents, was an accident. I was writing with a couple of uh, songwriters at the Kirshner Publishing Company, and one of his, one of the guy's uncle was a hit songwriter. He wrote Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. So my friend, his name was Danny. So Danny said, my uncle wants us to come over to the studio and just throw our voices on this, on these tracks. So we showed up, we got about a hundred bucks, and, and we sang and we acted out five different vignettes. And I, I you know, I figured this is, Trash. Nobody's going, to, nobody's going to ever put this together. Well, they put it together. They put it out as the detergents, and it was a takeoff on Leader of the Pack. It was called Leader of the Laundromat. And sure enough, it was a hit. It got played. It sold almost a million records on Roulette Records, which was a, the mob label. So we never got paid, but we, at least we got away with our lives. But but it was a it was a hit. We went on the road with that. The detergents went on the road for about a year with Dick Clark and his caravan of stars. That's why I met Peter Noon and I, I met all these other people on the road. You've had a fascinating career and it's interesting how you got your start. It, actually, you had a little unfortunate incident that yes. became sort of serendipitous, right? You wanna tell them about that little event when you were a sure. child? Sure, you know, I was about 12 years old and I used to play Tarzan you know, I'd fly and trees. I'd put up swings because I lived in a country atmosphere. Well, one day I fell out of the tree <laughs> and I busted up my arm and my wrist really badly. And the doctor said, you know, it's going to be stiff the rest of your life mm -hmm. if you don't exercise it every day. So you can either squeeze a ball or take up an instrument. And I immediately say, well, Elvis is my is my idol. And he plays a guitar. So I said, I'm going to get a guitar and I'll, I'll play guitar. And that 
pointed me in the direction of music. Because once I got the guitar, I started to sing. I started to write a song and I formed a group. And uh, from there on, I, it was music. And I, I was playing New Year's Eve gigs at 14 years old with my groups wow. until I met Don Kirshner at 17. But that was a, lucky, it was a lucky fall. I could have broken my head, you know. <laughs> hey, Ron, I've got to say something. This is true. In the 60s, in 1966, when Batman came out, there was a lot of kids jumping off roofs with capes. That's true. And also, we had the Three Stooges happening here, and they took it off the air because kids were ha hitting each other with hammers and real oh. crowbars. They didn't know it was fake. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, I just want to get back to Tracy. And the cufflinks, because that was a yeah. big hit here in Australia. Tell me about Tracy recording that song, and now you got it. it it's so funny. I, here's the connection. The guys who wrote Leader of the Laundromat wrote Tracy three years later, four years later. And they called me up, and they said, would you put your voice on this song? I said, sure. They said, would you make up a background for it? I said, sure. So it took about two hours. I put about 20 of my voices on the track. And and ba 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 ba. I made up all the ba ba ba's. I was trying to be like the Association or the Turtles or you know those groups that did a lot of ba ba ba's, and it worked. You know, and Tracy was a cool name. I thought, and it was a pretty big hit here, there, and in the UK also. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I was I was very happy to have. At one point, I had Sugar Sugar was number one on the chart, and Tracy was number nine both of them in the top 10 worldwide yes. and and uh, nobody knew my name but i was i was happy you know <laughs> tell me this in 1969 sugar sugar's come out it's number one in the world right and then you decide to go on holiday and you go to rome or wherever around the world is that right yes i i, I took some of the royalties i took my wife at the time and we traveled we went to rome and france uh and uh england and in Rome, we went to the discotheques, right? And we're sitting in this great, luscious, you know, beautiful discotheque. And they're playing all kinds of other dance records of this 1969. And then they play Sugar Sugar. And everybody <laughs> jumps up. I was so happy because I didn't realize it was such a big dance hit. And it was at the time. It was a big hit. And wherever we went, England, France, uh, in Germany, we, we really did well with that record. They, they caught a beat there that people like to this day. I actually did, uh, I had a friend of mine in Germany do a, a remix and a dance version of it that is on my new CD. So Sugar Sugar <laughs> opens it and closes it, side one. And it's really yeah. cool. It's got some good sounds in it too. Can't wait to get that CD, so much yeah. fun. Yeah, you know everything's Archie. It's one of my favorite songs. Archie, see it. Yeah. <laughs> ba, 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 I'm driving. Ba. Listen, I'm serious, Ron. I'm driving around Melbourne playing that in my car. Is there any way you got your guitar that you can just play a couple of chords of that song? You know, I I, I put my guitar in the other room and I just oh, not today, but I, I I yeah I remember it was like Archie's here. Ba 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 ba. Reggie's here. Veronica too. Betty's here. Ba 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 ba. Hey, Jughead, where are you? <laughs> really that does, you know, he's got one of the greatest voices in the business, and he's had it. And this guy's just a massive talent. If you ever wanted anyone to write a song, sorry, to sing a song, Ron Dainty is the studio number one choice. And you're going back to the 60s or wherever. How great is that? You just heard the voice. He still got it. It's sounding better than ever, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. You know, during this layoff, I have to keep singing because, you know, you, you don't use it, you lose it. So I've, I've been trying to, you know, keep a, a, a weekly schedule of uh, warm ups and then sing some of my hits. And, and, it's, and at least it keeps the voice lubricated, you know, because because uh, next year is going to be gangbusters. Next year, there's going to be a lot more shows. I think everything's going to come back big time. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping. Could do an no, online concert, Ron. In the meantime, keep those, say, keep the voice up, do an online concert or something, right? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. There's a, there's a company here in town that lets you rent the, uh, a rehearsal hall called SIR, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll put lights and sound in there and a, a stage. 
And I'd rather do that than like a home thing. A home thing is it's okay, but the lighting's never good. The sound's never great, you know, and you want it to be really good for the fans. Absolutely. I think yeah. I had an Archie's uh, lunchbox when I was a kid, actually. That's great if you got that. That's a collector's order. I don't have it's, it anymore. I it's, right right back, it's right back there. It's right back there. My, my yeah. mom saved a bunch of them. And you sang, did you, you sang Rock and Robin at one point too, didn't you? Yes, yes. I, I always loved that song. I love da 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 It's just got that hook to it. You know who sang on that cut with me is Peter Noon. Oh. Yes. Okay. I, I'm going to put that on the next, uh, next CD. This CD okay. I had uh, my friend Andy Kim sing on Rock Me Gently with me. Mm -hmm. I had Bruce Johnston from the Beach Boys sing one of the Beach Boys songs all summer long. And uh, I even got my uh, fellow Archie singer, Tony Wine, who was the girl voice on the Archies. And we, we, did, a, we did a great version of uh, Summer in the City. So I tried to get my friends on the albums too. Fantastic. I've got to say, Jingle Jangle with Tony Wine, you can't beat it. <laughs> that, that, that was huge. I remember the day Sugar Sugar came out, I bought the 44, then followed by Jingle Jangle Bang. Then it had bus stop or truck. <laughs> The truck, the truck one. Well, Jingle Jangle, you know, they did it in the wrong key. Uh, Tony was supposed to sing the lead. She was supposed to do it. But then they said, we want you to sing the lead. So I said, well, you know, it's very high to me. They said, well, sing it like Lou Christie or Frankie Valley with your falsetto. <laughs> so that's what I did. So people can't tell the difference between Tony Wine and me on the album, on that single. There was a million seller. I mean, it did really well. Ron, can you sing me a couple of lines of that? We might as well get some practice in while we're here. <laughs> Which song, Jingle Jangle? Yeah, yeah, give us a few lines. We might as well keep the voice lubricated. Yeah, it was like, ever since I met you, I couldn't love you better. I couldn't love you stronger if I tried. It's my true heart I'm showing. Oh, my nose would be growing. You know, they get it gets longer if I lie. Now I need oh, a band. Ron, Where's my band? <laughs> Ron, you know, I've got to tell you, you don't know how many people you're making happy around the world now. Now, listen, I've got to move to Barry Manilow. How do you go from having a great career and then producing Barry Manilow's albums? I'm fascinated. Like, I mean, did you know him or you saw how much potential he had and you said to him, I want to produce you because I reckon you're the greatest. How did that come about? Well, I, I was singing commercials for a long time in New York City. I was a jingle singer and I was booked on this jingle and the writer of the jingle was Barry Manilow. He hadn't recorded yet. Uh, he was working with Bette Midler, but she hadn't exploded yet. And uh, it was a good jingle. And uh, he said to me, I know you, you're from the Archies, the Catholics. I know you, um, would you listen to some of my songs? I wanna be a solo artist. So I said, sure. Next day I went down to his apartment. He played me, could it be magic? Oh, wow. I said, well, wow. And then five or six other songs. I said, we must go in the studio and get and get you a record deal. And that's the way it began. About a year later, we got our deal, maybe less. And about a year and a half later, Mandy came out. And oh. that that was the beginning of a monstrous career for him, which still goes on. And uh, so backup, it was great. I, right. You sang backup for Mandy, too. Right? Yes. I did all the background voices on Barry and I were the background group for most of the hits. For mm -hmm. Can't Smile Without You, Even Now, um, Could It Be? You listen to those tracks. It's just two guys multi-tracking their voices like we did. Barry would sing low, I'd sing high. And uh, it, we created our own sound that was not unlike other people's sounds. So I was very proud of that. We had 18 singles in a row that went top 10 over a five year period. And uh, he's still doing a great job in Vegas when he plays there. Amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. You, you have you played so much. You also produced Ain't Misbehaving, didn't you? Well, you, it's so funny. My next door neighbor was a good, a, a, a writer named George Plimpton. Very famous guy in the 60s and 70s. He threw a party and introduced me to James Lipton who had a TV show here called The Actor's Studio, Inside the mm -hmm. Actor's Studio. Oh, yes, I remember that well. Yeah. Jim, anyway, he be, we became friends. And at the party, he said to me, would you like to produce Broadway shows? And he gave me a script. He gave me an outline. 
it became my first show. And the second time he came around, it was for Ain't Misbehaving. He said, would you like to be involved in this show that's at the Manhattan Theater Club, a little club in town? I went down and saw it. I said, I'd love to be a producer of a musical. That's great. What a great connection. Music and music and more music. And sure enough, it won the Tony. It ran for three years. And I was very honored to get the Tony from Gene Kelly, who was, <laughs> gave out the awards that oh. night. It was, it was like a dream come true. You know, music and more music. That's great. Great. If you can read that first, Robin. Robin, read the text. You got a, uh, from Kathy, you got hi, Ron Dante. Love all your hits, the Archies, the Partridge family, etc. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. The, I, that was my friend David Cassidy with the Partridge family, of course. Yeah. And uh, I, David was a great guy. And we were friends since we were teenagers. I met him when he was doing the uh, Partridge family. We were on the road together promoting our albums and our new records. And we buddied up. I told him to stay away from the, the young girls. You have to be careful on the road. And I gave him good advice. I said, be careful on there. There'll be a, there'll be a lot of temptation. And we became good friends. He, he was a really good singer. He, he wanted to be a rock and roll star. He wanted to be a rock instead of the Partridge family. But I think he was great as, in the Partridge family and a great in his career afterwards. But uh, I want to thank Kathy for that uh, mentioning that. Well, can I ask Ron, what, what Partridge songs did you actually sing on? I'm curious. Not, not I. I, I that was, oh, that was the one thing. I, you know, if they had asked me, you don't want to know something, an interesting uh, turnaround. When David left the show, they asked me to take his place. Wow. And I'm not I said, somebody. you know, whoever takes his place is going to be less. No matter how good they are, you're always going to be the second one. And I didn't, I just didn't want, I didn't think it would be a good career move at that time to take the show and, and, and be part of it. So I turned it down. Mm -hmm. I had a friend with me who thought I was nuts. He said, how can you turn down all that money and all that? I said, listen, it, it could ruin a career. And I, David made, it was the perfect uh, partridge and nobody, nobody could take his place. So I, so I didn't, I didn't uh, take it. I Same haven't heard that before, Ron. Yeah. I haven't heard that at all. It's a new one. <laughs> You're have getting you brand new stories. Have you told people about this? Is this commonly what? known or not really? It's not commonly known, no. Thank you I for think, telling us. You I bet. think what's interesting is that, you know, it seems like you've been at the right place at the right time for your whole life. You know, it's just obviously because of your talent and hard work. But also, you know, where you've been and just where things have led, it's just all gelled like a big, beautiful puzzle for you. You're right about that, Robin. That's right. I, the reason is I, I did a lot. And while I was a demo maker, singing demos for up and coming songwriters, they became <laughs> successful. And I met a lot of people through that. Then when I sang commercials, I met a lot of people through commercials. And my reputation built and built. But... I was always walking around Broadway, meeting people too. You'd go from one music building to the other and in the middle of the walk, you'd run into somebody and they'd say, you know, you'd be right for this. Would you like to do a Broadway show? <laughs> or would you like to sing background for Neil Diamond, which yeah. I ended up singing some of his earlier records. I was mm -hmm. doing backgrounds with Jeff Barry and Ellie Greenwich who produced him to begin with. So it was a very fortunate thing to be born in New York City, but you had to really get up to Broadway you know, and the Brill Building and those great buildings and be there, you know, and work. I, I would get up, get up there early in the morning and leave late, you mm -hmm. know. I, I would do sessions at 11 o'clock at night if something like Bob Crew would call me and say, I, I need a background, bring in three or four of your friends and we need to, you need to sing and I'd, I'd show up. That's great. It's, 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 like a lot of fun. That's Thank unbelievable. You. When I went to New York, I actually went outside the Brill Building, which is that gold building, all that gold all night. I had to see it, Ron. I had to see it. It's it's the Mecca. There was more <laughs> hit people walked in and out of those hallways than you could shake a stick at. I mean, I, I worked there for a while for uh, for Bobby Darren. He had a publishing company, and he hired me to be a songwriter for a couple of years. So he had an office on the eighth floor, and I'd get in that elevator every day, and you know, never know who's going to get in. Paul Simon would be next to me. Uh, Tiny Tim would come in, uh, mm -hmm. so Sly Stone yeah. when he was just making the, you know, the 
it's amazing the people. And then you go down to the coffee shop and you shop and you meet everybody. A little coffee shop on the side, Greek coffee shop, and and you meet all kinds of hustlers trying to get their songs placed and stuff. It, it was a great building. It was magic, and the hallways were great to sing in. They echoed. It was a long hallway, all kind of tiles, and once in a while you'd see a group just harmonizing in the you know trying to get the the ear of some producer or publisher. Ron, can I mention a few names from the 60s and tell me if they ring a bell or you can say something about it? Okay. Chip, Chip Douglas. Chip Douglas. Uh, I, you know, I know him. He's very famous. I, I, you know, I, I ran into him once or twice in the studio. Uh, he, he was one of the greats. Let's face it. The Turtles? Well, the Turtles. I used to perform with the Turtles. The Archies would open for the Turtles at festivals. 10, 15 years ago, and all of a sudden I was on the Happy Together tour with them three years ago, and they liked me so much they made me the lead singer of the Turtles because Howard Kalin decided to retire because of health issues, and next summer I'll be the lead of the Turtles again. So it's great. I get to sing Happy Together every night. I mean, what a gift to a singer, you know, imagine me and you, I do, I think about your day and night. It's only right. You know, I had to study Howard's vocal, but he, he was a great singer. Paul Revere and the writers. Yeah. Well, Mark Lindsay's a close friend, and uh, he is the voice of Paul Revere and the Raiders, and he's the, the excitement of the group. He wasn't the comedy. He was the music of the group, and uh, we're very close friends. He'll be on the Happy Together tour next summer again, for sure. Did they get you on the Happening 69 show when they were running the TV show or where the action is? You know, what I'm saying again? I'm sorry. Sorry. Did you appear on where the action is or the Happening 69 show? Yes, I did. I did where the action is with the detergents up in Toronto. And, of course, Mark Lindsay with there was with the Raiders at the time. They were the house band. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love doing that. I did uh, Bandstand. Unfortunately, when I did Bandstand, that four year period, they erased the tapes and they recorded over them. Because, no. so, so they've lost like four, Dick Clark lost four years of artists on his uh, Bandstand show from 1969 to 73. Andy Kim was also on it. Both of us went crazy because we couldn't get that clip. But it's amazing. I love doing where the action is. It was a great show. It was all outdoors. You know, you're at the ocean. You're at a beach. Beach. You're you're a, a, a fairgrounds or something. It was it was very uh, funky actually. And we had a lip sync, so it was pretty easy. You know, you just mouth the words. I want to ask you about Bobby Sherman. Bobby Sherman. Bobby Sherman and I were both on the back of cereal boxes. We were both uh, on lunch boxes. He was one of the most merchandised guys in the world. Uh, he's a friend, you know, I know him now. He's a, he's a policeman in the valley here. Uh, he carries a 38. Uh, he's a, a paramedic type of guy. He goes out and he helps people and stuff. But he's close to retirement now, he told me last year. He said, um, but he had a great career. I, we actually did the show Shindig together. He was in on the house with the Righteous Brothers, Sonny and Cher, Bobby Sherman, and they had my group, the detergents on, Shindig. And I, I didn't know what they were gonna do at the end of our so song that we're singing about the laundromat. They dropped a ton of laundry on us at the final. <laughs> so you couldn't even see us. We had to crawl out from somebody's clothes. But that was that was my first meeting of Bobby Sherman. Fantastic. So Going back to the monkeys, as I said, because I grew up with the monkeys, they were my group, not the Beatles. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking back being a first generation fan, eight, nine years old, there hasn't been anything like it since. It's the same as we go from, I'm a believer in December 1966, the double A side single, and that was produced by Jeff Barry, written by Neil Diamond, and that was the forerunner to the bubble gum. And there you are in 69 with a number one hit produced again by Jeff Barry, and I think co written by Jeff. And it's number one in the world, Sugar Sugar. It's, a, it's an amazing coincidence. You know, some of the musicians who played on I'm a Believer played on Sugar Sugar. Jeff Barry had his crew of people as a producer, so he went back to them time and time again. And uh, I, I think he should have done more work with the Monkees, uh, to tell you the truth. I thought he was very good fit. 
They got a great vocals out of them. The song, you know, the, the bringing in a Neil Diamond song. Neil couldn't have done it as well as Mickey Dolenz and the Monkees. So I, I think they missed the boat on, you know, I don't know how that the business went. I'm sorry they didn't work with him more. Uh, same thing with Boyce and Hart. Really good guys, very talented, very talented guys. They get, they really. Last Train to Clarksville is a, is a monster song and a great hit. You know, you can't, you can't beat those early hits. They deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I will vote for them with my friends who are also in. There should be a category for them, maybe. They're, they're so good. Uh, you know, they led the way for tons of other groups, TV groups, and other other things that happened also. But they, they were musically very sound. And, uh, you know, I just I just think they will last as long as the Beatles. There's no doubt about it. People talk about the monkeys every day. <laughs> you know, they play their music every day. It was so impactful. Well, well I think we're going to see the wars every day pretty soon. As soon as it comes out, that album will be uh, in every household, we hope. Can you tell the people a little bit more about how to get it, Ron? Um, Sure. My, my album, you can go to Amazon. You can go to uh, Amazon.com. You can get the pre-order. It'll come to you by the 30th. You can go to, uh, on Facebook, I, I love people to go to Amy's Pop and Rock sh Shop. Amy's Pop and Rock Shop. It's where you can get a, an autographed copy of it, and she'll send them out right away. So you'll even have it before the 30th. So it's there. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's going to be on all the sites that sell CDs. It's, it's, it's going to be available by the 30th. It'll be available everywhere. And you can you'll probably be able to stream. You can already stream one or two of the songs on Spotify. Uh, I noticed they put up a couple of, uh, if you're on Spotify or any of those services. Uh, I'm really happy about it. Uh, it's something I'm really proud of. You know, you finally get to put something out you're really proud of and that you know the fans are going to enjoy. Well, I've made a double CD, 45 songs. 17 unreleased tracks. What more do you want? You can't wait until Christmas to buy it. You've got to get online now and start buying the CD because they're buying it down here. I can tell you, Ron, it's all over the net down here. We're going to keep talking about it and we're going to keep telling people about it because it's the number one double CD of 2020 and I'm sure it's going to be the number one CD in years to come. It's just a fantastic compilation of songs. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gift for the holidays. I'm going to give it to all of my friends for the thank holidays. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. You guys are great. I love the cover, Ron Dainty's Fun House. <laughs> I love that too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Can't wait. I'm going to be singing these songs tonight as soon as. Oh, good. I think I think it's time for some fun. We've it had such a happen. rough six months. All my friends, there I am again. We've had such a rough six months. It's time. To have some fun let's yes. let's make it a great christmas time and a great new year's uh, we, we need some of this you know we've been down for a while all the poor acts that are out there we need we need to get them back on the road people have to come out of their homes and come to the shows and they will they will and they have to support people like you buy the cds you know i know i love to clean my house and sing and dance so that's just what i'm going to do with this cd play it while i'm cleaning my house and sing my heart out I'll well, sing everywhere, even in the shower. I don't yeah. stop singing here. <laughs> hey, Robin, where are you? What, what are you in? Are you in Los Angeles? No, I'm in Connecticut. Connecticut, lucky you. Beautiful. Connecticut's beautiful in the fall and Christmas. It's, it's very gorgeous. pretty up there. Yeah. Very pretty up there. So, uh, how are things out in California? I know we've had some fires. Yeah. That hasn't been good. We've been lucky uh, where we live. The fires haven't gotten to us. So we're very, very lucky. Last year, we had to get out for a couple of weeks. There were there were two fires that came close. But uh, we're okay. The weather's beautiful. It's 80 degrees out here. It's really nice. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, taking my walk, doing my vocalizing, and, uh, you know, and just talking to people online, you know, going to visit my face. If everyone wants to talk to me or say hello, come to my Facebook uh, it's Ron Dante. There's one picture of me with the Archies behind me, and there's another site with me in the red jacket. You can't miss me. Those are those are my personal sites. Okay, we will find you for sure. We'll be ordering those CDs. Everybody out there will be ordering those CDs, and and hopefully, as you start working on your next one, maybe you'll come back and talk to us a little bit about that. 
Oh, sure. I would love, as soon as it goes into the works early next year, I'll be doing that for you. It's a Thank great you so time. much. You guys are great. Ron, mm -hmm. just a favor. Just stay there for a minute. And I just want to say to everybody out there, if you want to give them a message, take us out, Ron, but stay there. Say goodbye to everybody for us on the show. Okay. It's been great being here. Goodbye, everybody. We love See you, Ron. You.